Hey, I'm going to show you how to use the Tray AI editor to convert an existing website into an XR application using WebSpatial. Let's get started. So what is WebSpatial? WebSpatial is a tool that you can use to build cross-platform XR applications using JavaScript, React, HTML, and CSS. The goal is that you don't need to rewrite your website using a completely different tech stack like WebXR or Swift UI to build a great XR application. You can see here, this is just a standard website. We have a 3D element on the page, uh, but it's pretty basic uh, turning on localhost here. And in the web spatial uh, app that's running on the Apple Vision Pro simulator, you can see some slight differences. First off, the web page can pop right out and you can see that we have these spheres that you can even interact with, drag them around, throw them, bounce them, and uh, this is all rendered using the web spatial library. Additionally, that same model that was displayed at the bottom of the page is now in full 3D, and it's actually like right out of the page, and you can even see the UI up here uh, is 3D. Pretty cool. Some other features of Web Spatial include changing the background material to match the native platform, pulling out existing elements on the web page into 3D and animating them using React or CSS, and we even have the ability to open additional window containers, such as a volume. So this is a uh, 3D object that's placed in 3D space within a volume on Apple Vision Pro. And we also have the immer uh, fully immersive space where you can see there's a sphere that's floating right in your room. Let me show you how I use the tray editor to improve my day-to-day -day coding workflows. Over here, we have the right side panel where you can ask tray different questions um, or get it to even write code for you. Um, here we have an example where I asked it, uh, tell me how to use the XR background material to get a translucent effect. Trey might not necessarily know how to do this right off the bat, but I can provide it context by saying, hey, look at this test server, which has examples uh, that I can draw from. To do that, you can type hashtag file or folder to tell it where to look. And so if I wanted to tell it to look in the test server uh, examples, I can uh, find that here and just do it. And then I can ask the question and it'll know about this information. Here, it looked at a number of different files and said, based on this information, you can use this dash dash XR background material CSS property. And it tells you exactly how to use it. You can set the background color, you can make sure that it has some transparency, and you can also set the uh, background material behind the background color of the web page to be translucent. This will give us the native effect that we're looking for. Pretty cool. So now that we've got the information from Trey, I've gone in and updated the HTML file with the style property at the HTML tag to have a uh, opacity in the background color and also added this new XR background material style effect to translucent. That'll give us the blast effect. So now if I look at what it looks like in the website, we got our hello world with this kind of gray background and in the uh, simulator, we have this cool gloss effect with this uh, dark kind of tint. Very cool. I don't always like to write the code myself. So based on Trey's feedback, I can just tell Trey to write the code for me. So for example, on this index.tsx page, we have the hello world, which just displays right here. But I can tell to build whatever kind of components that I want. And Trey takes care of all the CSS syntax for me. So I don't really have to look up complex documentations or really know how everything works. I can just ask Trey and it goes ahead and tries to do it for me. So maybe instead of saying hello world, we can ask it uh, something else. So I'll say, make me a React component that uh, shows a list of spaceships. Make sure the style of the page looks really cool. Please use Tailwind CSS and React all in one component. Cool. Fire that off. And because my cursor was on this line, that gives Trey a little bit of context into where to add the code. So give it a little bit of time to think here. Okay, it looks like we got the results back from Trey here, and it's updated our index.tsx file with some spaceship content. We'll see what uh, that does. I'll click apply, 
just made some changes, looks reasonable to me. Click accept. Very cool. So it's built us some cool looking UI. Uh, very interesting. Um, but hey, maybe we lost our uh, background here. That's probably because we uh, are missing some transparency. So let's find where it made a mistake. So to get back the nice glass background effect, we needed to get the transparency of the background to continue to work. Because the generated code that Trey originally produced didn't have this transparency, it wasn't working. So then I asked Trey like, hey, can you make the opacity a gradient from 70 to 100? It wrote some code that wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it showed me the syntax that I needed to use, this like slash 20 to the slash 100. And so now we have a cool, nice gradient from the glass background effect to the uh, solid blue. And you can still see that there's a little bit of glass effect there. Very nice. So this is great. It already feels kind of a little bit more of an immersive application with that glass background. But maybe we also want to kind of pull the content out a little bit into 3D to just create a little bit more immersion. So here we have all these different spaceships here. And we can actually find them in our code. So it looks like this div is responsible for that. And because we're using the web spatial library, we can change this div element into an enabled XR element. And so if I just save this, it doesn't really modify the website at all. It's just still standard. But what this enable XR flag allows us to do is we can add a style to the page that includes a new property. And so we can use this XR back property. And let's say, let's make it uh, 50. Okay, we'll save that. And so when we have this XR back property, it'll update the position of the elements and actually move them into 3D. So now they're kind of popping right out of the page. That's very cool. And so there's how you get a little bit, just a little bit more immersion to your website. And you can see that in the standard website, that element is just ignored. So you're not going to get any of the 3D effect there. Another feature that I like about Trey is that instead of telling Trey what I want, I can actually give it an image of what I'd like and tell Trey to write the code to match that image. So here I went back to the hello world that we originally had and I'll highlight that line and maybe take a screenshot of what I'd like the UI to look like. So maybe I want to show like some NHL uh, standings. So I can take that screenshot, drag it in here and say, uh, update my app component to show NHL scores like in the picture. Use Tailwind CSS for the styling. And fire that off. Cool, it looks like we got our output. And let me just find the file and apply the changes. So it looks like it uh, removed some of our uh, code that we probably want to keep for web spatial. So I'll reject that change and I'll accept the rest because it looks pretty reasonable. So we'll save that. And now we'll open our web page. And we got uh, a score going on here. Looks pretty cool. Looks like the Oilers one. Nice. Um, so now that we have this UI, we can then go through the same process that we did with the other code that uh, Trey has written for us and pull out the content into 3D, add additional panels, uh, and do kind of whatever you'd like to modify the website. So hopefully this shows off how you can kind of take an existing website, add more components to it using Trey, update the website using Trey, and then extend it into XR using Web Spatial. So I have to caveat that Web Spatial is still in development today, and so not all features might look exactly the same as in this video, but hopefully the workflow will be somewhat similar in the future. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us uh, in the comments below, or if you want to join our Discord or, or talk to us on GitHub, that's great too. But uh, hopefully, uh, this insight helps you guys in your web dev uh, workflows and uh, look forward to hearing your feedback. Great, thanks, bye.